Are you ready to take your business to the next level? Every day, there are countless books and articles that are published offering the key on how to make your business a success. It's easy to feel overwhelmed trying to keep up and run your business. That's why Deb Creer created the Business Power Hour. Keep up on the latest trends, best practices, and techniques for how to make your business a success. Let the Business Power Hour do the heavy work for you. Good morning, good morning. I am Deb Creer, and I am passionate about giving professionals the tools that they need to make themselves and their businesses as successful as possible. And today we're going to be talking about something that I'm pretty sure in all of our 880 programs we've never talked about. Um, Or if we have, it's been long enough ago that I can't remember it. But it is something that many, if not most, maybe even all small businesses should be doing and... (gasps) either don't do it at all or don't do it correctly. And that's writing proposals to get new business. Um, you know, and, and it's going to be because we're all going to say, yuck, we hate it, right? Um, and so please join me in welcoming an expert and a person who's going to help us in this, Joe Ardiser, to our program today. Welcome, Joe. How are you doing? Thanks, Deb. I'm, I'm doing great. Excited to be on your show. Thanks for having me. Perfect. Well, let me tell people just a little bit about you, and then we'll jump into this. So Joe Ardiser is a former digital agency owner of 12 years and has the battle scars to prove it. He's worked with notable brands such as Bluetooth, T-Mobile, and Scantron, and has built and built his agency from just himself to a team of 12. After selling his agency, Joe decided to take his passion for sales and proposal writing and create smart pricing table, which is interactive proposal software that cuts down on the back and forth, incorporates upsells, and helps generate proposals at lightning speed. So again, Joe, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Great intro. (laughs) Well, you know, it's always such fun hearing about my guests, but I always want to know more. So, you know, like I said, a lot of people go, ooh, proposals, kind of like sales, right? We don't want to do it, you know, but we have to. So how is it that you decided that this is your passion in life? Yeah, well, actually, that's a great, great uh, observation. And it's totally true. Um, And actually, part of the reason why it's my passion is because at one time, I hated it myself. Mm -hmm. Um, I think proposal writing for so many people, it feels nebulous. It's a lot like writing. I get writer's block. Mm -hmm. There's all these questions on whether I'm doing it right. And um, I had I had my agency. Uh, mm-hmm. as you mentioned, for 12 years mm-hmm. and actually um, came up with a product internally to mm-hmm. solve the issue Okay, um, and I fell in love. Uh, that was really when it started. Mm-hmm. I started just hyper-focusing on what makes mm-hmm. a good proposal. Right. You know, and like I said, many small businesses have to do proposals. And I, you know, I, I shared before the program, I hate them. I hate writing proposals. I have not written a true proposal in years. You know, I've done the thing of let's just send an email. Let's go back and forth. Let's, you know, and and then uh, further down the road when there's questions, you know, all of these various things. That's, of course, where when we didn't put things in in a formal document, that's where the the problems arise. And so, you know, it, it really and it's and but I think with so many of us and now, you know, when I had to write proposals, they would be 20, 30 page proposals. They were these long, complicated, here's what we're going to do for you. Here's examples of our work. Here's why you must bow down to us type of documents, right? Right. And it took forever. And I know what they did was they went flip, 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 flip to the end, right? Right. They didn't care about any of the rest of that stuff. They wanted to be able to refer back to it, but they didn't care about it. And so I finally said, enough is enough. I'm not going to do proposals anymore. Right, right. Yeah, and I think I think that's common. Um, you know, th- this idea that I'm putting all this time and energy, mm-hmm. and I don't even necessarily know how they engage with it, whether right. they're interested, whether mm-hmm. they even looked at it. Right? Mm-hmm. I mean, what a great feeling! I spent two hours uh, working really hard on this, right? And I I literally never hear anything mm-hmm. from them, mm-hmm. and so it makes you just want to chuck your computer out the window mm-hmm. and say, I'm not I'm not going to write proposals anymore, right? Um, but there's a better way, mm-hmm. right? Um, which I'm sure we'll get into yes. a lot of that today. Yes. 
You know, and I, I, I loved looking through your website, which is smartpricingtable.com. And, you know, you, you provide a great example there as to how this works. So I encourage folks, and it's short, not long, folks. It's not going to take you long to look at this. But what is clear is, you know, it, it really does simplify this process without oversimplifying it. Right. Um, you know, and, and it was interesting because I, I, you, know, I, I, you live in Idaho which is not really the Mecca of business. Yeah. But, you know, part of my thought process when, when I was looking at this is it makes it, you know, you, you can work with anybody on, you know, on their proposals, but more importantly, it just shows that we can re, you know, we can compose these proposals and, and basically provide them to anyone in the world using, right. you know, the, the tips and, and techniques that, that you have. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, and, and I'm I'm from Seattle originally. Mm -hmm. uh, lots of uh, my agency was was over there. Um, I we moved out here partially because it's just so beautiful. It's lots Idaho. Of, it's Idaho. Mm -hmm. Lots of room to roam. Mm -hmm. You have little kids, or at least you know my impression yeah. was little. You have kids. I do. Yeah, mm -hmm. three young, mm -hmm. three young boys. So. Ah, yeah. So you need lots of room for them to roam. That's right. That's um, right. You know, and, and you mentioned one of the things with proposals is we end up with this back and forth and back and forth. Well, what did you say? What did you mean? Right. And that's where it is so nice to have it written down. Right. And so kind of talk us through the process of, you know, how how this even goes through. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is, this gets me really excited, Deb, because I just remember that pain like it was mm -hmm. yesterday. And here's the secret. So if you're if you're listening, okay, this is pay one attention of, now, folks. Mm -hmm. One of the most valuable things I'll say. Mm -hmm. If you um, so so I I work uh, mostly with professional services companies, mm -hmm. okay, and I think this can apply to other areas, right. but specifically for professional services. Mm -hmm. Um, the the game changer for me was the mm -hmm. idea of productizing your offering, right. Okay. So for so many folks, what they're doing is they're creating a proposal and they're opening up Word and it's this mm -hmm. blank document. And, and they're, they're starting over out. every time. Exactly. Right. Starting over completely. Mm -hmm. um, but if you were to think of your service, mm -hmm. whatever that is, mm -hmm. more like a product mm -hmm. and you defined, you put some walls around it, mm -hmm. what's included, what's excluded, uh, limitations, right. upsells, all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. All of a sudden you can grab it. Now, Unlike a traditional product, you can tweak it, mm -hmm. right? You can tweak the service right. offering. Maybe you allow this and this mm -hmm. kind of thing. Um, but but proposal writing is is less of like this creative writing endeavor mm -hmm. and more like putting Legos together mm -hmm. and then just quickly adjusting for your right. prospect. I love it. You know, and and I looked at, as I said, how to do it. And then you've got some great examples in there. And so... And maybe that is the biggest challenge for people is to figure out we offer A, B, C, D, right. and the price is a hundred, two hundred, three hundred. I mean, you know, whatever it is, um, and and you know, we all know kind of what our pricing is. Now we you know we want to be flexible. I remember I you know long ago when I worked for an agency, one of the things that that um, the owner told us is you know he said you price what the market will bear. And so, for example, if we were working for a nonprofit, then it was priced very differently than if we were working for, say, an attorney, because right. the attorney is going to expect us to charge several hundred dollars an hour. Right. The nonprofit wants free, but you know, but you know, aside from that, they you know they they wanted the least charge as possible. And right. so I like that your system allows that because, yeah, you can go in and you can change that pricing or you can show a discount or, or whatever you want to do. But I think that is probably one of the biggest challenges that people have is to sit down and go, what do we offer and what do we right. charge for it? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I love giving a, an example of this. Mm -hmm. So let's let's think of um, I, I use I, I won't go to a, a new example that I haven't thought through because I'm eating my own dog food here. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but um, the one that comes to mind that I share often is imagine you're selling social media marketing services. Mm -hmm. So Deb, you come to me and you say, Joe, I want you to take care of my Facebook marketing, right. I, uh, social media content creation. Mm -hmm. I don't want to deal with it. Okay, great. Well, 
The wrong way to do it is first start from scratch. And I, 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 of course, if you're just beginning, you have to start from scratch. Right. But, mm -hmm. but um, the, the wrong way is to just open up a document and say something vague like, um, I'll manage your social, your Facebook uh, social mm -hmm. media page and create some new content every month. And it's going to be $1,500 per month. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's, uh, and, and that's also a great way to, to, you know, confuse your prospect, mm -hmm. not manage expectations, mm -hmm. um, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So here's, let me get really practical. Okay. Imagine uh, I send you a, a proposal, Deb, and one of the line items is Facebook uh, uh, management or social media mm -hmm. management. So what I like to do is in the first uh, part of that line item is a quick summary sentence. Okay. Then I include a bulleted list. I'll say like work included ah. or details. Mm -hmm. I like the bulleted list because one, it's fun for me as a business owner to be really, to think through what mm -hmm. I offer in, in the right. details. I'm going to post every day. I'm going to provide monthly reports, yes. yep. things yep. like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or, or like five posts per month. Mm -hmm. um, I'll engage with up to 50 comments, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the bulleted list is easy for your prospect to scan. Mm -hmm. It's also easier for you to price because once you've broken it down into right. smaller pieces, you can establish the level of mm -hmm. effort and make sure you're profitable. Mm -hmm. okay. I then, after the bulleted list, I recommend uh, putting any limitations. Like mm -hmm. I note there's a limit of 15 hours max per month on okay. this or something like that. Mm -hmm. And then underneath, and this is where smart pricing table can really be a game changer, mm -hmm. you can put upsells. Ah. Okay? So for instance, you could have um, unlimited comment interaction mm. okay, for an extra $350 per month. Mm -hmm. um, and I, of course, as a business owner, I'm thinking, do I want to... Do I want to do unlimited? Do I want to do, you know, an extra right. And it's, it kind of goes with your schedule, all those various things, right? Right. Mm -hmm. right. But you're actually, you're, you're getting out of your business. You're mm -hmm. slowing down mm -hmm. so that you can speed up later. Okay. Right. You're thinking through when mm -hmm. I sell social media management, what the heck am I talking about? Right. Right. I, I remember a quote, a uh, project manager of mine told me that I loved. He said, if there's a mist in the pulpit, there's a fog in the congregation. Ah, if in other words, it grows. Yeah, yeah. If you don't know what you're selling, mm -hmm. I promise you, your prospect doesn't either. Right. So you go through each of those line items, mm -hmm. create some upsells, et cetera, et cetera. And then um, little by little, start establishing that catalog of sorts for your mm -hmm. business. And then it comes to get things come together so much quicker. Mm -hmm. And I dare say it's enjoyable. Right. Yeah, because when it's easy, you like doing it. And you like it even better when you have positive results. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I remember I once read a quote from, I think, Steve Jobs, or basically it was this pie of uh, this pie chart of good design and good, mm -hmm. good applications. And uh, he, the, I think the idea was Microsoft got it right in that they got the functionality part. That's 33% mm -hmm. of the pie. Mm -hmm. uh, the fee, or, uh, Actually, I think it was, I think it was user experience and mm -hmm. then features. Okay. Right. So they could use it and there were features. Mm -hmm. um, but where Apple really improved on Microsoft was the third part of the pie, which is pleasure. Right. right? If you have the features, mm -hmm. people know how to use it mm -hmm. and it's fun. Mm -hmm. um, that really sets a, a, a system mm -hmm. or process or a product apart. Right. You know, and, and once you have it down to that process, then it really is easy. Um, you know, and, and, and what I'm thinking about is how many times, and you know, for our, our wonderful listeners and our viewers, I want all of you, unless you're driving, to raise your hands on this. How many times have you lost work because you were too lazy or too slow or just didn't do it to do a proposal? Mm -hmm. And any of you who didn't raise your hand, you're lying. <laughs> You know, because right. we did, you know, even if it was, even if it was a project that we didn't want, right. I've done that before where I overprice stuff <laughs> just so that they, I, I can submit something. Um, but I really didn't want to work with them. Um, but, uh, but yeah, you know, if, if we've all lost business because we haven't been responsive. Right. Right. And, and it's so easy. If, if you've got a task in front of you that feels fuzzy, mm -hmm. there's unknowns, right. like there's, it's so easy, especially, I bet a lot of your listeners, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the CEO is doing mm -hmm. proposals, mm -hmm. right? 
Right. There's so many distractions. And mm -hmm. if it if it's an, instead of a, a 10, 15 minute task, mm -hmm. if it's like two hours, mm -hmm. good grief. Right. But we all know, I mean, if you've gotten a, 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 a bid for a, an electrician mm -hmm. or, or a roofing company, mm -hmm. the company that responds right away, mm -hmm. I hear you, you're reaching right. out, I hear you, mm -hmm. that's huge. And then the one that gets me an estimate, you get me an estimate two weeks later than right. the other person. It's like, why did you even do it? Yeah, I've already done it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I have a new roof. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. For, Too bad, so sad. For mm -hmm. 20 years down the road for consideration now. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, and, and of course, the other thing, when you've done a good proposal, it makes doing the contract very easy because right. you you laid it out. You said for ABC, we will do, you know, or for, for $2,000, we do ABC. Right. For, you know, DEF, then that adds another $2,000, um, right. you know, and, and so right. it is, it's very easy then to do the contracts. A, a lot of businesses, and in, in this, this, that's actually a really good point mm -hmm. that I don't talk about enough. A lot of businesses will put a ton of terms mm -hmm. regarding the services that they're right. providing in this like contractual mm -hmm. text, right? Mm -hmm. So there's all these things that they're agreeing to. Mm -hmm. And your customer, they're, in all likelihood, didn't pay much attention to it, maybe didn't right. read to that at all. Mm -hmm. But if you put the terms for your service, mm -hmm inside the actual line item because maybe right. i'm going to do maybe deb i was going to do facebook uh mm -hmm. social media management maybe i'm going to do some cold outreach email mm -hmm. campaign for you right mm -hmm. so just imagine a few different line items mm -hmm. if you're putting the terms for those individual mm -hmm. services inside those line items mm -hmm. guess what people are going to listen right they're, they're going to read it they're going to mm -hmm. act they're not going to miss as much mm -hmm. Right. Or if they miss it, it's their fault because it was there, um, you know, and, and so I love that, you know, and it, it, it is it, like you said, we don't want to miss things. Um, I, I had one that I learned the hard way um, that actually came out. Okay. You know, it was, it was one of these. So years ago when I still, like I said, still did proposals, we did a whole new brand identity for this wonderful photographer and right. You know, her, uh, what she did at that point in time was um, the, the portraits of kidlets that goes above the fireplace, right? Um, you know, so these, these you know, you, you went and, and it was probably, you know, she did them for a variety of things, 16th birthday, graduation, you know, all of those things. And, and so, you know, the things that you really wanted these wonderful portraits done for, she spent right. lots of hours retouching, you know, if the, if the kid had braces, she could take the braces off. I mean, all sorts of things like that. But her image was not sophisticated you know her her child had designed the logo on crate with crayons i mean it was cute but right. when you looked at it you went oh you know they're they're going to charge me 100 bucks which was not what she charged so right. you know we we put together this proposal that we were going to completely redo everything starting with brand design logo website the whole works so this was not an inexpensive type of thing and i remember one of the things that we did was we submitted probably eight different logo concepts. And all the proposal said was, we will submit logo concepts. Client picks one, right? Yeah. Something is as simple, basic as that. Right. And, and that's what happened. You know, she, she picked the one we wanted. We probably tweaked it, which, you know, all those things, but all of those things start adding up, right? Because, right. you know, uh, you, we've, we've all seen it where, you know, they're like, well, but I want this shade of blue. No, I want that line a little thicker. Okay. So you need to build in there, you know, three revisions or whatever. Right. Um, but yeah, we, we went along and had a, had a great time, did this whole thing. And a year or so later, I get an email from her and she says, you will be so thrilled to know that my husband is using one of your other logo designs for his business. Right. I was not thrilled. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And now she obviously meant it as a compliment. She wasn't being sarcastic. She wasn't right. anything like that. And, and so I looked and yes, indeedy exactly one of the concepts that we had proposed she had in there, you know, or her husband was now using. So nice. I contacted him very politely and said, no, you know, this, this is not acceptable. You know, she paid for that logo design. And as a trademark attorney, he came back to me <laughs> and said, well, you didn't spell it out in your proposal. You right. did not say, you know, all these things. And so he very nicely rewrote the part of my proposal as his payment. 
um, yeah. for, you know, and, and so, and, and that was what it came down to was how many revisions yeah. that the, you got one logo, everything else remained the property of wise women communications, you right. know, all of those things. But yeah, I mean, it was just, and, and like I said, she in no way meant to, to be doing anything improper. She right. thought it was great that, you know, she got to, to use this logo and other things. And I was like, no, honey, you didn't pay for that one. You right. paid for the one you're using. Um, right. So, you know, that then of course became something that went into every proposal I did work, right. not, you know, concepts, not selected, remain the property of. Right. Um, right. And, and one of the questions is, do you have a system that when that stuff happens, right? Mm -hmm. I used to, I call it eating concrete. When you right. fall head first on concrete, uh -huh. Uh -huh. that's what business does to you, right? right. Mm -hmm. When that happens, mm -hmm. do you have a way of handling it so that it doesn't happen in the future? Mm -hmm. And I look at proposals. Proposals are the foundation of mm -hmm. any good project. Right. You're setting the tone, you're setting mm -hmm. the terms, the expectations, mm -hmm. right? And so you, you wanna be building a system mm -hmm. where I, I learned that, and mm -hmm. I, that clause goes right. inside of my mm -hmm. uh, logo design mm -hmm. um, line item, right? Yep. So that is very mm -hmm. clear. Maybe it's smaller text, so it's not mm -hmm. in their face, not mm -hmm. you know, overwhelming, but you've got somewhere to put that. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, and it's, it, you're protecting both sides. I mean, you know, and, and to me, that's why it's so important to have a proposal and then a contract. Um, now you might just, your contract might say accepting the entire proposal. I mean, you know, depending on how it's written, you might not need to, to do a separate contract, but it, you're protecting both of you, you know, right. you, both, both parties. Um, you know, we all have, you know, any of us who've been in business very long and have done any of these things, we know this lovely little thing called scope creep. Right. right? Yeah. Where, you know, they paid for A, B, and C, and then they're like, mm, can you do this? And can you do right. that? And gee, right. I'd like this. And then we, as the business person, have to make the decision, yes, right. we'll toss it in for free, or yes, but <laughs> it will cost you type of thing. Right. Um, you know, and, and again, that's where having the proposals and then, you know, the, the however you, you agree to go forward, that's where it's great to have everything written down. Yeah. And, and I like to talk, I like the, some ideas that come to mind. One, I, I talk mm -hmm. about putting a fence around your work. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, what's included and what's not mm -hmm. included. Mm -hmm. um, I also like the idea of handles to grab onto. So mm -hmm. in your, and I'm not saying build line items that are lots and lots of text. Right. Like, mm -hmm. You don't want, you don't want to go that, that far. Mm -hmm. You want to establish enough clarity so mm -hmm. that the spirit mm -hmm. of the work is clear, right? Mm -hmm. if, if, if it if it ends up that you're you're doing an extra ten percent, mm -hmm. no big deal, or ten percent less, no big deal. Mm -hmm. But you shouldn't be doing twice as much because mm -hmm. you should be able to say, well, I mean, if you look at the line item, it was really mm -hmm. limited to this and this, right. and so at this point, I really need to go hourly. Mm -hmm. um, I also like um, that there was a. I would ex explain this to customers at my old agency. Uh, terms inside of an agreement. Mm -hmm. uh, they're kind of like a bat. So uh, the idea is, um, I I don't want to hit you, mm -hmm. but get away from my wife. Ah, right? mm -hmm. Like like the the clauses. We had so mm -hmm. many clauses in our agreement that they mm -hmm. were. I never used them. I almost and almost right. never executed on clauses, mm -hmm. but they were there because they helped manage expectations mm -hmm. and made it mm -hmm. clear, like we're a business, we need mm -hmm. to be profitable, et cetera, et cetera. Right. You know, and some of these things are things that we need in there that are common sense that we don't put in there. Like right. how soon do you have to pay? Right. Um, you know, and, and now it's funny years, years ago, um, I worked for a government contractor and, and our clients were NASA and the Navy, you know, and oh, invoicing them was part of my, my job. And it was always one of these things I hated because, you know, you're dealing with the government. If I had one I that was not dotted right or one T that was not crossed right, it, they just stopped. I mean, you know, and and of course, we continued doing the work. They just wouldn't pay us and they wouldn't notify us either. That was the, the thing that annoyed me. But, you know, one of the things that that we learned was we had to put in their terms. You know, you have to pay within 30 days or there's 10 percent tacked on. If right. you go 60 days, it's 20% tacked on, um, right. you know, and, 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 uh, you know, and, and that was because the government bless their little hearts. They're notorious for slow pay. I mean, that's just, you know, the, the way things worked. And so when we told them, Hey, you know, you could pay late, but it's going to cost you. They right. were fine with that because right. we'd spelled it out. 
Um, right. But yeah, yes. you know, if you're going to, if you're going to give, maybe you're going to give a discount, you know, if you pay within 30 days, take off 10%, um, right. you know, and, and, um, you know, and, and all of those things, but, but, you know, and, and we always just assume, oh, they'll pay, they'll pay when right. I send it. Well, you know, it doesn't work that way, folks. Um, yeah. You know, and 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 again, it's protecting both of you. You're not having to be the the mean, awful person going back and saying you haven't paid your bills, and yeah. they're not being the people thinking, "Oh my God, I didn't pay." Um, right. You know, it's yeah. just it's it's a protection. It's just the process. Mm-hmm. It's the process. It's yeah. how we do it with every mm-hmm. customer, right? One right. of my favorite clauses was a reactivation fee. Oh. So in a, the agency world, it's very common mm-hmm. for them to hurry up and wait. Right. Mm-hmm. They're really wanting the, to right. do it on uh-huh. the website or whatever. Yeah. And maybe they've got this event mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden they, everything goes on hold mm-hmm. and you don't hear for two weeks. Yep. Well, we had, uh, I like the, the idea of having a clause like something like this. Um, if there's a two week delay, mm-hmm. then there's a 10% reactivation fee. Ooh. Mm-hmm. And, and, and uh, truth be told, I've never executed on that. Mm-hmm. Now I've brought it up, right. but I never actually executed. Mm-hmm. It did exactly what it's supposed to do. Mm-hmm. It Prompted them to mm-hmm. not delay, right? Because all of a sudden it's like, well, mm-hmm. I don't want to pay an extra ten percent. Mm-hmm. So, um, right. what do we need to do mm-hmm. uh, to make sure that we're right. keeping right. the project going? And and sometimes it's just a matter of them picking up the phone, sending a text, communicating in one some way to say, "Hey, Joe, we need another week." Right. You know, and and things like that, and and then of course you know, kind of the the same type of thing is to say, this proposal valid for thirty days you know, whatever, um, so that they don't come back and, and want a bunch of, you know, want to sign it. And you're like, huh, we can't do this now. We don't have the, you know, we don't have the capability. Um, but yeah, you, you should have an end date in there. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I, I actually, I remember having projects where we had, um, uh, there's, we actually had a clause that if it was after a certain amount of days, it would be mm-hmm. hourly to finish. Ooh. Um, and, I. But I mean, it was like, it was like six months kind mm-hmm. of thing. And for some, I mean, you get into some organizations and your entire project is a rounding error mm-hmm. on their budget, right? And mm-hmm. so there, it's just not as pressing, mm-hmm. um, but it still affects you as a business because mm-hmm. you're, it's like, I, I have this thing that I've promised. Mm-hmm. Um, and so having a contract end date mm-hmm. um, uh, is so helpful. Right. And again, I, you don't even, it's not that you have to be hard line on it. Mm-hmm. You could say, look, you know, we we have this in here for a reason Mm -hmm. and I'll actually give you a grace period of another Mm -hmm. 30 days. But Mm -hmm. after that, I have to put everything on hourly. When Mm -hmm. we first engaged, it was before inflation. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. So much can change. Well, and it gets them to respond when you ask them, you know, so maybe you've sent them a draft to review. And it sits there on somebody's desk or on their computer forever. You know, no, you don't want that to happen. And so those kind of those little timeline things are are very good. So it could be something as, you know, as each part of the project, you know, you've got one week to review or whatever. I mean, you know, right. again, we're just making it better for both the client and the person yes. providing the work. Yeah. You're setting the expectation and the, it, it, I love this rule in mar- uh, marketing. Mm-hmm. Tell the customer what to do next. Yes, mm-hmm. schedule a demo. They're busy. Yeah, they mm-hmm. they they don't necessarily know your your pr- prospect, your customer mm-hmm. may not know what it's like to mm-hmm. go through your service. Right, mm-hmm. they may not understand. And so when you have a straightforward outline of what they can expect, mm-hmm. really really helpful. Right. I, I'd also say that um, it builds trust when mm-hmm. you're clear on what you offer. Mm-hmm. It, it kind of uh, this idea that we've done this before, mm-hmm. right? It's right. clear when you're vague, it's kind of like, you know, uh, I think of like a, uh, some kind of magic show or a circus or something mm-hmm. where a guy has a black box and mm-hmm. he tells someone to put their hand in there. Right. You're like, you're like what's in there? To, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to, they're going to bite me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. I don't want to, I don't want to do that. I don't, mm-hmm. I, I'm not sure what I'm going to get. Mm-hmm. Don't do that to your prospects. Right. Don't make it so mm-hmm. vague that they're like, you sound great. Mm-hmm. I really like talking mm-hmm. to you, but I have no idea what I'm going to mm-hmm. get because you haven't told me. Right. Don't do that. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, and, and it's, it is a give and take. You know, if you want them to provide X, you have to say, here's what I will do in, in right. you know, and again, like say communications, you will respond within 48 hours of us sending something to review. 
we will then respond within 48 hours if we have questions. Right. You know, and, and so it's just, and, and like we said, people are very busy. So if you make it, okay, we do this, this, and this, it's so much better than the other people, because if they're smart, they got more than one proposal, right? The people right. went, well, we'll we want to work with you. Let's hope this will be a mutually beneficial agreement. Right. right? right. <laughs> yep. Yep. And one thing I, I, I want to say kind of as we're talking about, we're talking about a lot of concepts and some of your mm-hmm. listeners might be, you know, their, their uh, pencils get in smoke because mm-hmm. they're writing things down. One of, one of the big key ideas with all this though, mm-hmm. is continuous improvement, right? Maybe, maybe there's a lot of ideas here and you're not sure where to start. Mm-hmm. Well, the first thing is get some proposal specific software mm-hmm. and start building right. something, mm-hmm. start building a template, mm-hmm. start building a line item catalog. Mm-hmm. And then if some of these things you're like, I don't even know if I want that, mm-hmm. that kind of clause or term right. or whatever, well, just keep doing projects. Mm-hmm. And with every project, take those learning lessons back to your system mm-hmm. and improve it. And right. I, I can tell you, you know, doing that for years mm-hmm. at my old company led to some of the, I mean, just the best of years, mm-hmm. very, pro- very, very few problematic customers. Right very few issues with um, client expectation management Mm -hmm. and really fantastic reviews Mm -hmm. as well. We were one of the top rated agencies Mm -hmm. um, nationwide Mm -hmm. on a website called Clutch. Um, I love it. Mm -hmm. It came from that kind of stuff. Right. And as you said, we got to start somewhere, Um, you know, and, and so it's, you know, it's, it, it really is important to take that step you know, to, to say, okay, we're, we're going to look at this, um, right. you know, and, and, and one of the things that, that I've done also is, you know, the good old Google, which now of course we can use some type of, you know, like a chat GPT or something like that. Right. Um, to say, give us sample proposals yeah. and, and then you kind of go from there, um, you know, and, and because we're not talking about reinventing the wheel every time folks, right. you know, the, and that's, that is of course the cool thing about what your, your service offers is, it's, it's in there. You know, you just have to right. go through and basically you're checking the boxes and then making sure, okay, the pricing is right. You know, all right. of those various things. Right. Um, but yeah, don't reinvent the wheel every time. Yeah. Yeah. And if, if, uh, if one of the things that slows you down from creating a system is writing the content for your mm-hmm. service outline, use chat GPT. I right. have a couple proposal samples on our website mm-hmm. at smart pricing table mm-hmm. where I, I wrote most of it with chat GPT. Mm-hmm. I also love using chat GPT to say, here's my line item and here's what I wrote. Mm-hmm. Can you tell me some things where I might go wrong and, and get into some scope creep? Right. Mm-hmm. You can ask uh, chat GPT very specific mm-hmm. industry uh, questions mm-hmm. and it's startling. Maybe scary. I know it is. It's a little scary, right? Mm-hmm. How, how um, I mean, how uh, beneficial the mm-hmm. that feedback can be. So that's mm-hmm. a great, a great tool to leverage. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I like just grabbing some content. You can even say to chat GBT, um, I want to I want to uh, offer social media management. Mm-hmm. Can you give me a summary sentence, mm-hmm. a bulleted list of items included, some limitations and mm-hmm. some upsell ideas mm-hmm. and most you know, 90% done, mm-hmm. copy it over and right. then you're building it. You're making it better over time. Mm-hmm. As you learn right. Things. Yeah. And for everybody who's going, oh, that's scary. I don't want to use chat GPT. Okay, folks, get over it. What it's doing is it's doing the work that you would have done. So, you know, I can ask it the one or two sentences, or I can spend hours on Google looking for samples and then doing it myself. Right. I want to do the short, you know, like we said, the the goal of this is to make it easier, Um, you know, and, and so that's the thing. And, and, you know, I want to give an example of a company that, you know, of, of when proposals were really important. Um, We decided uh, earlier this year to have a new deck built on, on our house. You know, we had this itty bitty little thing that was 10 by 12, right? You can't put anything on a 10 by 12 foot deck. And so we decided, you know, so, so I go to Facebook because there's a local group um, here uh, for local contractors. And I said something along the lines of looking for someone to put in a deck for us, licensed, you know, all of the keywords that, you know, you really want when you're doing something like that. And, and, you know, uh, please contact me. Well, of course, I must have had 50 people right away that just, oh, we can do it. We can do it. We can do it. And so I kind of selected, I selected one that was a woman and I thought, ooh, a lady contractor. Um, I mean, I was just really psyched about that because I thought I would love to support a woman owned business. Well, she was in partnership with her husband. So, I mean, that was still okay. Um, 
Now he came and, you know, took notes, looked at what we wanted. And then, you know, through direct message in Facebook, I got the, it will cost X number of dollars. Right. That was it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One it's sentence. Such a turn, such a turn off. Right. What, what, you're, not, you're not telling me anything. Yeah. And, you know, and then I had another one who said, tell me what the others propose and I will beat it. Right. And I said, no, that's not the way I work either. You know, and, and so I went back to both of those and said, here is what I need from you. And I was really specific. I said, I need a proposal that gives me a timeline that, that breaks it down um, for contract or for, for labor, for materials, you know, all these various things. Um, I need your insurance information. I need your, your licensing information because one, I was pretty suspicious about, you know, even being licensed. In fact, one of them, I said, you know, now do you pull the building permit or do we? And he said, well, it's behind the house and can't be seen. So it doesn't need one. And I went, oh no. (laughs) But, you know, and, and so from both of those, I got crickets. They would not do a proposal for me. Went to the third guy and now he was recommended by the neighbors. And so that helped a bit. And I, and so I had seen the, what he did. Right. And he came, he visited, he took notes. We got a six page proposal that said, we will do this and this and this. And we anticipate that it, I mean, it was so detailed. It was like X number square foot of whatever the board was. Yeah. I mean, you know, yeah. And so more than, more than we really wanted, but you know, he was showing his expertise, exactly what you were saying. Yeah. Um, and, and yeah. And then he put in things like we do not paint. You know, right. we'll be more than happy to provide you with, you know, with, with uh, contacts, but that's, you know, and so, yeah, we don't do this. We will be there by eight every day and we will stop by five. Um, yeah. He had the, you know, he had in there about weather. Um, we're in Atlanta. You know, we, we didn't want anybody out there using power tools if there was lightning, but you know, there, there would be some people who would say, you said you would get it done within X date. Um, right. You know, you're, you're going to do this. So we went with him, right? Because yeah. it was very clear as to now he was almost twice as much as mm-hmm. the other two, but I knew exactly what we were getting. Right. And I mean, it just, and, and I don't know if he used, you know, a specific type of software or what, but it was, it was so detailed and, you know, and, and then of course he had in there, here's, here's referrals. Here's, you know, all those other things. Um, he referred me to the website for pictures, you know, and, and then we went back and forth a couple of times. There were some things that we changed, but because he had it in a proposal, we will do X. We said, okay, how much more will it cost to do Y? Yeah. Um, and then he was very clear, you know, this, the, the yeah. price. And, and so it made it such an easy process that, you know, it was like, dude, we will refer you to everybody. Yeah. Um, I, 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 lo- I love that. And I think decks are a great. Um, oh, cause it, it, there's really not a, there's not a ton of stuff that you're putting into it. Right. Mm. Yeah. Well, and it's also, but I, I like, I like it when in business, you can find a pattern. If mm-hmm. in your business, you have no patterns, it's right. really hard to build efficiency. Mm-hmm. You can't build a catalog mm-hmm. if every single project is right. entirely mm-hmm. different. What I love about decks though, is if, if you're a construction company and mm-hmm. you do just do decks or maybe mm-hmm. you do decks and, um, landscaping or mm-hmm. some, whatever right. the case you can, uh, Dex, I can actually see where there's a good amount of mm-hmm. communication needed in mm-hmm. that. Right. And, and possibly some options. Think mm-hmm. of, uh, do I want Trex or do I want Cedar? Mm-hmm. Um, what are some options? Maybe right. there's mm-hmm. three common Trex options mm-hmm. that you show and mm-hmm. you could say like additional options available mm-hmm. on request. What about, um, lighted stairs, mm-hmm. right? A lot of people like that. Maybe your customer mm-hmm. would have paid an extra $300. Yeah, there's so much upselling that can be right. in there. Mm-hmm. But you didn't, you didn't tell them, right? Mm-hmm. The, the guy that sent you a number over Facebook, he mm-hmm. definitely didn't tell you. No. The guy going to beat the price. Okay. So, so, so you'll, you'll uh, beat the price by 10%. What if the price was 50% higher than it should have been? Mm-hmm. <laughs> or what if it was too low? Yeah. We had that happen with a, a painter where, right. where, you know, we, we just decided, okay, we're going to go with the lower bid and he hadn't bid it correctly. Um, right. Now he ate it. He did. Right. He said, you know, it, I, I made the mistake, you know, and, and, right. uh, you know, and, and, but yeah, it's it, like, like we said, this, this is something that, that protects both sides. Yes. Um, 
and and build build something that's repeatable you mm -hmm. should have, have like your brochure your brochure can act or sorry your, mm -hmm. your proposal can act a bit like a brochure mm -hmm. you shouldn't have to explain the the 10 different options you right. have for checking mm -hmm. every single time now while you're in person you can describe it mm -hmm. but i'm talking about the proposal mm -hmm. that should be set there and yes. you're thinking mm -hmm. about margins and costs mm -hmm. and materials and timelines and and you've got four or five different upsells. Like mm -hmm. that's a system mm -hmm. where I can instead of having to take an hour um, in after hours as a contractor when I'm tired, mm -hmm. building a proposal at eight o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. Imagine if you could build it in you know twenty minutes because right. you've already established so mm -hmm. much already. Right. You know, and I'm looking at the samples of proposals that you've got on on your website and. You know, one of the things that I like is you you list out as line item the things that are included in that pricing. Um, and so they're thinking, ooh, wow, look at all this value I'm getting. Right. You know, and 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 again, it's just it's it's a way to show all of the things. And and it doesn't matter if this is a five hundred dollar project or you know the I'm looking at the the example on your website that is a fifty thousand dollar one, um, right. so this is, you know this is a chunk of change that somebody's going to put down here for this, but you know I, I want to know the details. If I'm spending five hundred, I want to know what I'm getting. If I'm spending fifty thousand, I want to know what I'm getting. Right, definitely. Yep. Yeah. So so much prob so many problems can go away, and so mm -hmm. much can be enriched if we mm -hmm. simply. Are a, a, have a good deal of clarity, not mm -hmm. over, not not under, but a good deal of clarity mm -hmm. and help, help manage expectations. Right, right. What one of the things I love talking about, Deb? Um, I, how about how about how do you send a proposal? You want yes. To mm -hmm. that for a second? Mm -hmm. So I learned a trick uh, back at my agency that I loved. Helped our close rate a ton. Okay. Right? Yeah, because that's most, what we want, right? We want right? a yeah. good close rate. Mm -hmm. I want a good proposal, but a good mm -hmm. proposal that doesn't get one, mm -hmm. you know, right? So so here's what we would do. Um, I I have a 30-minute sales discovery call, mm -hmm. and maybe that's in person if you're a right. contractor or whatever, whatever service you do. So a 30-minute mm -hmm. discovery call. And at the end of that, I'd say, well, Deb, thanks for um, giving me, uh, downloading all that mm -hmm. information. The next step in our process is I'd like to schedule a 20 minute proposal review meeting. Uh -huh. right? I mm -hmm. would then, since most of uh, my meetings were on Zoom, I would mm -hmm. open up um, Calendly, uh, mm -hmm. calendar app. I would ask them for their time zone. Mm -hmm. and I would book the meeting right on the sales discovery. Ooh, call. I love it. Mm -hmm. So the, the acronym is FAMBAM. Okay. Mm -hmm. From a meeting, book a meeting. You'll oh. never, it's just so incredible. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, you know, scheduling questions, a bunch of follow-up questions that might mm -hmm. come up to be able to handle that right away, mm -hmm. get it booked. So then when the meeting comes, the attendance rate is very high. Mm -hmm. uh, number one, um, they don't actually get the proposal until after the meeting. That's part, mm -hmm. of, part of our process. Mm -hmm. But then also um, they really want your proposal because they probably have two or three others and they want to be able to compare. Right. Okay. So a really high attendance rate. And the point of the meeting is instead of just throwing your proposal over the fence and not mm -hmm. understanding how they responded, mm -hmm. you're selling them on right. the proposal. Mm -hmm. Selling them, right? Here's why I put it together like this. Mm -hmm. um, here's some additional items to consider. Mm -hmm. um, we just did this on this project. It was killer kind of mm -hmm. thing. You can overcome objections. Mm -hmm. And with Smart Pricing Table, if you're sharing the proposal, say mm -hmm. on a Zoom screen, you can actually make selections and uh, and uh, get the price uh, slotted out ah. right there on that call, mm -hmm. right? You will never get that level of engagement mm -hmm. when you just chuck it over the fence. Right. Yeah, I love that. So, you know, say they say, well, wait a minute, you propose two hours a, a week. I think we need five. Here's right. what it there will cost. Mm -hmm. The other the other vendor, they're having to write a bunch of questions in an email. Mm -hmm. And I could update it potentially right mm -hmm. there on the spot with right. this project. I always like saying too that um every hour that I'm talking to my prospect, mm -hmm. they're not talking to my competitor. This right? is true. Mm -hmm. And if I'm building proposals a lot faster mm -hmm. and quicker and it's enjoyable. Mm -hmm. I'm in better spirits during that meeting, right? Mm -hmm. Like you might think, well, that's another meeting. Good grief. Well, what if what if you exchanged a fun meeting mm -hmm. with all the work that you were doing mm -hmm. previously to create proposals? Right. I think it's right. a good trade-off. Mm -hmm. Well, and when you're having those conversations, 
it, it it definitely ties into the the old thing of we work with people we know, like, and trust. And right. so you're building that rapport with them. You know, they didn't just get, say, that PDF or that Word document. And God, folks, don't ever send a Word document because then they change it on either on accident or on purpose. And no, they always should be a PDF, if not digitally. Um, but, um, you know, it's... It, it, they're talking to you and they're building the rapport. And so you're able to, you know, maybe our deck example, you're, you know, you're, you're telling folks, you know, we, we went back and, and they sent us pictures of, you know, the, the, their 16 year old diving into the pool. Okay. You know, I mean, there's just all these right. little things because when it comes down to it, you know, you, we always want to make sure that we're comparing apples and apples and not apples and oranges, but it right. comes down to that personality. You know, right. again, whether we're spending 50,000 or 500, we want to work with somebody we know, like, and trust. And so these, right. these little extra meetings right. are the way to do that. Yeah, I think that's a really great point. I don't usually point that out with, mm -hmm. uh, with the proposal review meeting, but I think building rapport mm -hmm. is huge, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, the, uh, how, many, how many meetings have you had or sales conversations where it was kind of, there was a question mark on mm -hmm. who the company was or who the person mm -hmm. was, and then you talk to them. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just had a meeting just yesterday um, where uh, I was actually on an, uh, on another podcast mm -hmm. and um, the guy had a, 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 a side thing that he does. Mm -hmm. and he literally sold me uh, right after the podcast. Mm -hmm. Like I'm, I, I loved mm -hmm. it. I'm like, we're starting working together mm -hmm. right away. Mm -hmm. That I, I kind of built a relationship. Mm -hmm. I, I got a sense about mm -hmm. him, about the kind of person he was. Mm -hmm. And it made it so easy to just say, mm -hmm. you know what, let's do it. You've de-risked it for me a bit. Let's right. do it. Mm -hmm. um, so relationship is huge. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, and it, it it is, it's about that relationship, but it's also about making sure you're talking to the right people, right. you know, um, you know, like the, on our deck, one of the guys now, this, this one got eliminated right away. Wanted to talk to my husband. <laughs> I'm like, oh, you know, we can have him as part of this conversation, honey, but I'm the one that's saying whether we're doing this or not. Um, same thing, you know, like one time I went to buy a car and it was my car. I mean, we right. made it clear to the salesperson, I'm the one driving this. You know, my husband was just kind of there and and they just, you know, kept talking to my husband or the other way around. I mean, we we, yeah. we, we were getting his car and they kept talking to me. It's like, know that you're talking to the right decision maker, yes. um, you know, yes. and, and, and especially if it's a fairly big project. I mean, if, if, yeah. if a business is committing to something over the course of time and, or quite a bit of money, you might be talking with the purchasing person when, you know, it's actually the head of sales or, you know, whatever that needs to be in the loop. Um, yeah. you know, and, and yeah. so this, this call that you've got, you know, the proposal review is a great time to bring those people in. Yeah, I love that. I love that. And I think in a part of that, that call or part of the sales discovery call, mm -hmm. some good question to ask, grab your pencil, some good question to ask are, um, what's the decision making process like right. with mm -hmm. this? Some, th some people think, well, why would I ask them that? Like, they're mm -hmm. not going to tell me. They will volunteer that. Mm -hmm. I mean, they get it, right? They mm -hmm. do sales too. Like they get it. Mm -hmm. So just mm -hmm. ask them, what's the decision making pro process like? Who Who's involved in that decision? Mm -hmm. Um, are, what are some of the timeline uh, mm -hmm. things? And then um, the last one would be um, who, um, I, uh, what, what actually, sorry, what would, what would happen if this project didn't go forward? Ah. I love that question. Mm -hmm. It's really helpful. Mm -hmm. Right. Because that's going to give you a sense of the, the their priority, um, right. you know, and, and, I, you know, and it's not that you're going to say, oh, it's really, really important to them. So we're going to charge them more. You know, you still want to be fair. But, um, you know, yeah, if they're saying our business will stop, then it's OK. You know, then we need to make sure it's a priority on our side. We're going to exactly. do that, you yeah. know, and, and um, all of those various things. So I love those questions. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and it's, it really is it, the, the funny thing is we do all of this anyway, right? We just don't formalize it with doing right. the proposal. Yes. And that's really where we're missing the boat. And, and I want to just emphasize that again, because we want something that goes to the clients or the prospective clients 
that they can review. They're not having to say now, you know, when I talked to Joe on Friday, I think maybe he said, or can we find that email somewhere? Somebody sent an email where they, you know, right. no, you know, you want them to have a document that they can go through and review. It can be forwarded to the right people. You know, right. it's always entertaining when you have to deal with multiple levels, but um, you know, it, it's, it, it, I can't emphasize this enough and, and see, I'm really I'm going to have to do this, right? Um, you know, uh, it it does just simplify everything for everyone because the right. same thing, you're not going, what did I tell them? <laughs> what price did I quote to them? That's one of the yeah. worst things, right? Because yeah. they're they're usually not going to say, hey, you told us $25, you know, when you actually told them, you know, a, a totally different amount, right. um, you know, yeah. And, and so, yeah, you're making this easier for them. And, and you know, you've said it several times, I mean, when they're looking at someone else's proposal and they should be comparing, right? You know, right. this, this really is the thing. Make it so that no matter what your stands out, even if it's a higher price, yeah. you want yours to always be the, the thing that they that they keep, they use yours to compare everybody else to. Yes. Yes. And I think, you know, a big way to stand out. Okay. Here's where a lot mm -hmm. of companies are doing it wrong. Mm -hmm. A static PDF mm -hmm. with no interactivity. Right. Yes. Here's the if, email that you sent to them. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. if, if you, if you can use a system, so there's other systems, I think smart pricing mm -hmm. table is one of the best. Mm -hmm. um, we're always making, improving on it. Mm -hmm. And I come from a service-based background, mm -hmm. but um, if, if, uh, if you can create propose uh, proposals with optional line items, mm -hmm. um, uh, upsells inside of line items. Mm -hmm. okay? What it does is customers, um, they, they really, um, they appreciate having some degree of uh, control over mm -hmm. price and scope. Right. Sometimes that means they might de deselect something mm -hmm. and the price goes down a bit, but you mm -hmm. got the project, right? Mm -hmm. But most of the time in my experience, mm -hmm. we, we went from like, you know, I, I saw like a 30, 40% price increase mm -hmm. when we started really embracing mm -hmm. this principle. Mm -hmm. You give customers options, mm -hmm. right? All of a sudden there's FOMO at play. Oh, mm -hmm. I, I want lighted stuff on, I want right. light. On my, right. on my chairs, I, right? I saw that at Sue's house. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I want, um, oh yeah, man, oh, glass, uh, mm -hmm. glass, um, uh, uh, the, the, what I'm thinking on a deck that, um, the part that goes around the fencing. Good grief. Oh yes. Mm -hmm. um, glass fencing's mm -hmm. only, you know, a thousand dollars more. Mm -hmm. Oh man. Like right. I, uh, we, that mm -hmm. would look so slick. Mm -hmm. We'll look as good as the neighbors, et cetera. Mm -hmm. When you give them some optionality, mm -hmm. uh, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. Um, I actually, I, I love, um, a real quick story. I once had a prospect that said, hey, I have $25,000. Mm -hmm. I can't meet with you. Okay. So obviously that second part violated my don't chuck it over the fence. Mm -hmm. But because I knew they were completely not, not willing to, and we needed mm -hmm. the work, I decided I'm just going to create a proposal really quickly. Mm -hmm. So because we had a system, mm -hmm. put together a proposal for uh, in probably about 15 minutes mm -hmm. and chucked it over the fence. Mm -hmm. My only option. Mm -hmm. Didn't hear anything. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, sorry, I should mention that was kind of like the lower end of our projects at that point. Mm -hmm. Didn't hear anything for two weeks. They mm -hmm. said max of 25,000, like all mm -hmm. caps. Two weeks later, got a signature request for $34,000. <laughs> if I told them, Deb, I said, hey, I just happen to know mm -hmm. that you need actually 34,000. Mm -hmm. They would have written me off, right? Right. But mm -hmm. because they were in control of, of some of the pricing mm -hmm. and the upsells and they mm -hmm. decided they wanted to spend more money, mm -hmm. totally fine. I love that. So optionality, mm -hmm. huge. So so I just want to make sure that I'm understanding this with your proposal. So mm -hmm. back to the deck, you know, you quoted pressure treated oak, right. but you show them here's what cedar is. And so they can go, oh, wait a minute, I want that instead. And so they can just change yeah. the proposal. Absolutely. Yeah. And then and, and, and smart pricing table, you could have mm -hmm. them choose it, uh, the, okay. the type of product, uh -huh. you could give them a different price for each product. And you okay. could also show an image for mm -hmm. each of the options. Right. Um, so they have a sense mm -hmm. of it. And the point is, is I just, I don't have to think about this every mm -hmm. time. 
You want to scale your business? Mm -hmm. Create a scalable right. proposal system. Right. And I mean, it's it's like you you know the the uh, example with social media. I mean, they could be picking. Do we want daily posting? Do we want twice a week? Do right. and and so then they're again they're able to see here's what the the price difference is. Right. Yep. Absolutely. Oh, I love that. You know, and and it it eliminates the what about how about phone yep. calls and emails. Yep. Um, you know, they still might have questions and that's okay because yeah. when they're, you know, when, when you've given them that flexibility, then when they're coming back, they're really well thought out questions. Yes. And, and Deb, here's key. Okay. When you hear a question about your proposal, mm -hmm. you're answering it, but in the back of your mind, you're thinking, what do I need to be clear on so mm -hmm. that I don't have to explain this next right. time? Yeah. Because if one person has the question, somebody else will too. Exactly. We talk about automation. People talk about mm -hmm. automation all the time. Okay. Mm -hmm. Having things outlined in your proposal mm -hmm. is a form of automation. Mm -hmm. Instead of you having to say it to them, mm -hmm. it automatically is said to them through the proposal, right? Mm -hmm. If you love technology of automation, mm -hmm. don't miss the, you know, this very, very fundamental mm -hmm. form of, of making things easier. Wow. I love it. I love it. Well, oh my gosh, Joe, we've got just a couple minutes left. This has been enlightening. Um, and, you know, it's it's definitely something that I need to consider because like I said, I hate proposals. I hate writing proposals. Um, and I have lost business because I went, I just don't want to do it. Um, right. You know, and, and so for everybody else who, you know, to some degree, more, less, you know, feels the same way. How do people find you and what are the services that you provide? Yeah, so check out smartpricingtable.com. And um, I have two things on there to consider. Uh, we have a free guide called the Profitable Proposal Blueprint. And I got that. Oh, it's so I cool. That, it Deb, walks you through that. the process. Mm -hmm. grab, grab that. It's completely free. Mm -hmm. And then the next thing, um, I have a, a big green uh, scheduled demo button on mm -hmm. the top right of our website. Yep, Here's there it is. I see it. Mm-hmm. If, if any of this stuff is interesting, even if it's kind of tire kicking for you, mm -hmm. schedule a demo because mm -hmm. there may be some use cases, some ways to use right. the app that could really, mm -hmm. really help you. Mm -hmm. And if you do a free trial, I actually do a concierge kickoff call Ooh. where I'll help you think through some mm -hmm. of your line items. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Um, well, maybe we'll even talk about chat GPT. Mm -hmm. um, so smartpricingtable.com, schedule a demo. If, there's, if you have any mm -hmm. interest, I'd love to talk to you more. I love it. I love it. Well, you know, and and I like that you can get the demo and, and all of those, because like I said, I didn't understand until, you know, just a couple minutes ago that people could go in and change the options. You yeah. know, I was thinking that it was, as you said, a static proposal. You know, yeah. sometimes maybe you want it to be that way. I mean, you know, and, and let's not, you know, folks don't get carried away with don't give them options on every single thing right. because they'll just go. Through, it'll confuse them. Yep. Right. Yep. You know, and, and so, you know, don't do that. Give them, but you know, where it makes sense, give them, you know, give them the option and, and know that in the back of your head, you still might have some of those things that, right. but you're not going to, you know, that's only if they ask, well, yeah, but um, what if, yep. if I could pay you more, oh, we have to cut the budget, um, you know, and, and, and so, yeah, that's, that's great. And, you know, I, I love that. Yeah, it's fixed. Um, you know, it's it, it's fixed in a way that you've got your your catalog, you've got all of these things, but then everybody still has flexibility. Yep. Yeah. Well, this really has been so fascinating, um, and it's gotten me psyched about doing proposals again. See, so this this is a good thing. Um, so I will definitely check it out more. Um, until you know, do you have any final thoughts that you want to leave everyone with? Yeah, the last thing I'd say at risk of beating a dead horse, um, I, I remember a quote, um, it said, the, the idea is winners and losers both have goals, okay? We all have goals, aspirations, dreams, all that kind of stuff. What makes it, oftentimes it's the systems that help you achieve the goal that makes the winners, okay? Uh, so many folks, they don't like proposals. It's because you don't have a system. Just like any other part of your business, build a system here and it'll pay dividends in the future. I love it. Well, I've been having such an interesting discussion with Joe Ardeser. I'm Deb Creer. And until next time, everyone have a great day. Tune in for our next program for even more trends, best practices, and techniques for how to make your business a success. The Business Power Hour, hosted by Deb Creer, is proud to be part of the C-Suite Network.